Hi, this is Kerry Artek with Wicked Stocks, bringing you your daily Tesla report for Thursday, May 18th, 2023. As usual, please click like if you haven't already. Subscribe to the Wicked Stocks YouTube channel if you haven't done so. You'll be provided notification each and every time new content has been uploaded. That includes Tesla and Apple every single day and occasional stock picks. Um, you know, as far as stock picks go, you might also check out wickedstocks.com where we offer a full suite of analytical videos daily and weekly. Daily Triple Q, Daily Spy, Weekly Analysis in the S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, and the TLT, that is the Long Bond ETF, and two individual stock picks every week that you never see on YouTube that cater to sort of the short to near-term investor, short-term being kind of the two to three week, three to five week swing trader, and also the two to three to three to five month uh, near-term position trader in the stocks. This week, we put out two, one on wind resorts, and just on uh, Thursday, uh, sorry, Wednesday, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. So uh, you might want to check that out. Um, so here we are with Thursday's Daily Tesla Report. I'll just remind you, big picture resistance uh, begins and is really sort of uh, considered a two to three week target right now at 194.33. Uh, long term at 214.78, I don't expect to see this level anytime soon unless we were to close above 194.33, but that 194.33 targeted resistance area, two to three week objective, able to contain monthly buying pressures when tested and we could fall off from there. So that is sort of the big picture. And I say 194.33 is considered an objective following, first of all, having tested channel support about a month ago that is presently at 148.46. This was a targeted support level that I said could contain monthly selling pressures and once tested, one to two month upside objective in the 190s. That remains in effect. That was about a month ago. And about a week and a half, two weeks ago, we then settled above this descending one third speed line. That set off a secondary buy signal whereby the 196.94 area considered a two to three week target. Now we're a week and a half into that, and I don't expect to see this over the next week and a half, but. You never know. Uh, I think from here, still two to three weeks is realistic, especially in light of Wednesday's rally. So 160.50 is your base of support through next week. If we test it, we can bottom out there through next week and above which 196.94 remains a two to three week target. Of course, if we were to close below 160.50, we're back into falling into the upper 140s, the 146.06 to 148.46 midterm support region, able to contain selling through June and above of which still anticipating the 190s as a one to two month target that was narrowed to within two to three weeks following the settlement a little over a week ago above the 160 speed line. This is all old information for those of you who watch this video every day, but you know, there are newcomers every single day and I just want to keep you abreast of what's going on. If you like the Daily Tesla Report, a WickedStocks.com membership delivers regular daily video analysis in both the SPY and the Triple Q, weekly video analysis in the S&P 500 Index, the NASDAQ 100 Index, and a U.S. Treasury ETF, and two individual stock pick videos every week. Do yourself a favor and check out our other content by clicking the link below. So in terms of um, the day trade, where to begin? I'll start with resistance. It could be support depending on where we open. This former channel bottom roughly contained Wednesday's high at 174.37. If you look to the right, I call that intraday containment. May contain early day highs or early day lows. Early day highs, we could fall back to 163.76 on an intraday basis. 163.76 is that rising two-thirds speed line I've been mentioning for the last few days. Beginning to pull away from the 160.50 level, I'm calling that intraday support. So opening below 174.37 allows 163.76 intraday. And I use the word allow very specifically because I don't think it necessarily is likely. It's just that it may play out. On the way down, you've got 169.51, 164.88, but 163.76 is the strongest of all of them. And it could actually contain selling through the balance of the day. 
upside though if we happen to push or open above 174.37 and that is the path of least resistance right now given the two significant buy signals i illustrated here at the top of this video if we push or open today above 174.37 the 181.17 channel top in reach so once again you look to the right if we push or open today above 174.37 181.17 in reach that is a two-star resistance meaning we could top out there for two or three days that is to say through the rest of the week and from there fall back to the channel base right now it's not a channel base so it's just a mere trend line off lows so I don't, I don't even want to go there with its significance but it becomes increasingly significant once we test the 181.17 channel top we could within three to five days fall back to the channel bottom and trade inside this band for over a week now if we close above 181.17 that should not come as a great surprise I don't know about today but if we close above that formation at 181.17 rising gradually over the next few days that is actually consistent with the uh, not only the one to two month buy signal once we tested the 148.46 channel bottom but also the two to three week buy signal when we settled above the 160.50 speed line so closing above 181.17 is considered an eventuality not necessarily today but if so don't be surprised by the end of next week we should then reach the targeted 190s 196.94 on the daily chart on the weekly chart once again comes in at sorry wrong picture 194.33 so this 194.33 level is in reach by the end of next week if we close today above 181.17 now you know what to do you know i do get some of these questions like you know you're you're only sort of painting the structure of the market you're not really telling us what to do and there's so many different traders who watch this and view this there are day traders swing traders uh position traders who are holding for weeks on end the position traders who are holding holding for weeks on end are watching the 148.46 level to buy they're also going long above the 160.50 speed line when done so a week and a half ago the three to five day swing trader though uh, if you're long you're taking some profit at 181.17 and perhaps even reversing falling back perhaps into the mid 160s or lower once we test 181.17 and closing above 181.17 the three to five day swing trader goes or stays long into the 190s within three to five days in the 190 once again that 190 sorry there's the wrong image again the 194.33 channel top can contain buying uh, into July and we can fall off from here in a meaningful way and if we were to close above 194.33 at the end of any week let's say by the end of next week perhaps then yes the 214.78 long-term channel top becomes our next two to three week target where we can top out possibly through the rest of the year and fall off from there as we move into the third quarter it would be a settlement at the end of any week above 214.78 that would indicate a, a you know the discontinuation of this lower low lower high pattern in other words this bear market that tesla has been in for over a year uh, that would be discontinued if we close above 214.78 appreciable gains then expected as we move through the rest of the year but we're a long way from that right now uh, you know I think that that pretty much rounds out everything that needs to be said today um, if you need to hear it again I guess I'll just ask you to play it again <laughs> That is really all I have for Thursday's Tesla report. Please click like, subscribe, and check out wickedstocks.com.